Hello folks, Mink here to give my thoughts on Ultima 9, now that the run is done. And, uh, yeah. This game was a bit of a thing. I mean, in my... In my first thoughts, halfway through the game, I said it wasn't as bad as people made it out to be. And, uh... That might still be true, but, uh, I am definitely not as optimistic right now, having played through the game to the end. And, uh, that started almost immediately after that last recording, because I chose to go to Trinzic for the next town, and it turns out I couldn't have Raven sail me there. Every time I did, you know, the ship would turn, it would go, and then it would cut to black, and that would be it. Couldn't do a thing. Uh, now that's because I was recording. When not recording, it's immediately boot to the desktop. Just, bam, done. And, uh, let me tell you, sailing that ship is very annoying. I guess it's not really annoying, it's just pointless and boring. I mean, I know what they were going for because you were able to sail ships in other Ultimas. It kind of uh, gives a feeling of openness to the world, but there's no reason to go sailing, at least from what I know. The only reason is to find the tomb of Sir William Lett, which I did in my uh, getting sidetracked video, and that was a bit of a thing on its own. But yeah, sailing in this game is not fun. It's slow and boring. Very, very boring. And Trinzic wasn't the only place that crashed. Uh, there was one time sailing to Scarabray where it crashed and I had to sail there myself from Valoria I believe and let me tell you that sucked you know at least to sail to Trinzic I could go for Britain but going to Scarabray oh that was terrible no it wasn't from Valoria it was from the Isle of the Avatar yeah after I did the Isle I tried to have Raven sailed me to Scarabray, it crashed. So then I had to redo the isle and sail back to Scarabray myself around Valoria. Yeah, that's it. I knew Valoria was involved somehow. That was terrible. Uh, the game also crashed twice in the Stygian Abyss. Once because of the infamous uh, you kill a skeleton and walk backwards bug, which is fun times. That was really fun and Covetous, by the way. Adding on to Covetous just crashing whatever it wants to. That skeleton thing. Oh. And then the second crash in the Abyss was, I guess, just because the game wanted to. And that one hurt. That one hurt. Uh, after that crash, I took, uh, I think it was two weeks. I think I took two weeks off of the game. And um, I had to force myself to come back because even at that point I was feeling the boredom. I mean, the Abyss was neat and all, at least in the first half. But then the second half, I don't know why the elements came into play, earth, fire, and wind. But uh, I don't know, I, I just, I wasn't feeling it. And then from there, it only got worse. Anyway, to backtrack a little bit, another thing that caught my attention was the, uh, I mean, the cities themselves are small, as it is, but Valoria is really small, really small. And there's supposedly, I'm not gonna say a lot of citizens, but there's more, 
citizens than there is living space. I mean, there's the ones that are there already. I don't remember their names. That uh, traitorous guard guy. Uh, the gate guard that says you have to kill a dragon. Uh, the guy who gives you the... Uh, the, uh, uh, the mantra. But then you also have... Commander Hayes. Who supposedly dies or whatever. Uh, the Drake guy, I think his name was, that went to explore to Starred with a contingent of guards. So that's him plus however many guards. Uh, I think there's a guy named Reynold. Reynold? Something like that. So that's an extra, at least. Or not an extra, but that's like a total of six right there. But then you have to add in the uh, dying mage, his wife, and the trainer. That brings it to nine. Plus then however many guards there was. Uh... And in pause, the healer there says that she healed some guards. And it's like, where did all these people stay in this town that has only three buildings? Three! And I think there's only like, what, four beds? Like, oh my god. I don't know, that caught my attention. And it was... Uh, I don't know. Valoria itself was okay to play through. I didn't mind it. I also didn't mind Trinzic all that much. I mean, Dupre was a bit of a thing, but I was willing to let it slide because you only talked to his spirit. You know? So, that, that was okay. I was willing to let that slide because I did that, and then I went to Valoria afterwards, and he didn't show up there, which... Great. Fine. But, uh, we'll come back to him later. Um, but yeah. Uh, Rangers, I don't know why they're the only class that is privileged enough to get two pieces of Blackrock armor. I believe it's the, uh, helm and gloves. As such, you see it saw in the run. When I did Scarabray, I cheesed them out of that chest with the X trick. Um, yeah, because I don't get it. What's so special about rangers that they're the only ones allowed to get this armor? Uh, you also notice I did not X-trick out the uh, Blackrock chest piece in Pirate's Cove after becoming a member of the guild, or not Pirate's Cove, uh, Buccaneer's Den. Um... And that was because I knew I would get a piece later, and I didn't feel like kicking the already buggy game while it was down. But, uh, the game almost deserves it for letting that kind of thing happen. I mean, there's a point in the Abyss where you even have to X-trick a chest to get the... Is it the Blackhawk leg, Legs? I think? Because you kill a dragon while he's flying in the air, and the key for the chest doesn't fall. It stays hanging in the air. Impossible to get unless you either fly cheat or X trick the chest. So I just chose the X trick because that seemed simpler to me and less cheesy, I guess. I don't know. E either way, it's stupid. And that kind of thing, I want to say it should have been fixed, but when you read the development history of this game, you're kind of amazed that there's even a game to begin with to play, but then at the same time you're, you're saying, uh, maybe it kind of would have been better to not have a game. I, I don't know. The, uh... The spells... are kind of broken. You'll notice I didn't use a lot of spells in the run. And that's because they're not really necessary. I mean, I did use some. But... Yeah... You have spells like, uh... 
levitate, that don't do a thing, uh, create reagents, is broken, it mostly only creates black pearls, and it can also crash the game. Um, the spell of day supposedly drains mana without doing a thing, um, and there's more than that. The, the list goes on. The fog. Fog is interesting. I tried to use it because I read it kind of breaks the AI, and uh, I could be remembering wrong, but I could have swore I read it was a, uh, a constant spell that drained mana, but that was not my experience in using it. In using it, it did, it did that. It broke the AI when it was on, but it seemed to be like a duration kind of spell. You know, you use it, and then for however many minutes or seconds or whatever, that effect did what was stated, but then it ran out, you know, and you had to recast. And I didn't do that. I could have, but I didn't really have to. I mean, at that point in the game when I tried to use it, which was the end, the very last dungeon, I just, I was done at that point. I wanted to get through that as quick as possible. I was kicking myself for not getting the leggings of Sentry and uh, being able to keep the teleport spell so I could just skip that dungeon entirely and go right to the end. Because I knew you would be able to do that when I crashed way back when and had to do all that, do all that over again, re-get the uh, Bell of Courage. Instead, I chose to not get the leggings of Sentry and keep true to my original run and use the teleport scroll to get the Black Rock boots, I believe. I wish... I wish I would have got the, the teleport scroll because that wasn't worth it at all. Anyway, even doing this feels boring and pointless. I don't know, but the obvious the obvious problem with the game are plot holes and in the first half there were some, you know, asking what the what the codex is, uh, who the gargoyles are, uh, you know, stuff like that. Which is there mostly for, uh, to help new players, you know, because they don't know anything about Ultima, so they threw that crap in there to kind of explain. I mean, there's the also the infamous What's a Paladin Intrinsic, which became a meme thanks to Spoonie, but that one's really bad because the player... If, depending on how you answer the gypsy questions, the avatar himself might be a paladin, and he, yet yeah, he's asking, what is a paladin? I'm, that... <sighs> Stuff like that could have been done a lot better, but I understand because of the time crunch. I mean, from what I read, they would, they would write things in the story and then within hours they would have the voice actor recording and stuff, so... <sighs> yeah, that's the kind of game that we got. Anyway, plot holes. There, in the end, the last half, there are a lot. A lot of plot holes. Dupre, we'll go back to him first, because why not? I already mentioned him. Dupre, okay. Like I said before, I am not a big Ultima guy, but they, they oh boy, Dupre, they, hmm, it's really insulting what they did with Dupre, 
I mean, okay, you need to go get his ashes. That right there is a thing because the ashes were supposedly completely destroyed to merge him with the Chaos Serpent or Earth Serpent. I don't know, one of the serpents in order to save the world back on Serpent Isle. But, uh, yeah, so you have to go collect his ashes, who knows how, to be able to talk to his spirit. And again, I was willing to let that slide. Collecting the ashes, not so much, but talking to his spirit, sure. So, hey, they were kind of 50-50 there, you know. It's like, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe you'd be allowed to talk to his spirit somehow. I mean, okay, whatever. Whatever, okay, but... But then he keeps showing up, you know, you go to get the, uh, uh, the sigil of honor, and he uh, just randomly appears and says, hey, well, you can take any chalice, you know, it's just a, it's just a thing or something, I, I don't know, true honor lies within or something, I don't, I don't know, but then the goofy little chalice that you get magically grows grows up and becomes the sigil anyway regardless of all that i i don't know but none of that none of that is even on level with bringing him back to life after you cleanse the shrine of spirituality dupre is resurrected he's alive again which probably dooms the world anyway. You're fighting to save the world from the Guardian and uh, him, what, what is it, colliding the moons or whatever, which would destroy all of Britannia. But then you bring Dupre back to life and he sacrificed himself to save all of existence. So you bringing him back probably destroys all of existence anyway. So... What's even the whole point of this game? I don't know. I'm... I'm at a loss. And the Shrine of Spirituality in itself here. Why was it corrupted? The Guardian himself said that he destroyed Scarabray because they... They resisted the temptation of his columns or whatever. Yet you still have to cleanse the Shrine. Why? Shouldn't that mean that the shrine is still pure, I guess, is the word? I guess not, somehow. I don't know, and Lord British is supposedly this really amazing, amazing wizard that he can shift the moons. Why didn't he do that earlier? Why did he wait until the very end of the game to shift oh, this, this game? questions oh my god <sighs> Shamino says that you can't enter the abyss because you are not strong in, enough in magic yet through all of Ultima 8 you were fighting to become the titan of ether the lord of all magic what the hell was the point of that this game completely forgot that, I guess? I don't know. Instead, he summons the spirit of Malkir. Malkir! From Pagan! How is that even possible? Ugh. And then, Malkir tells you how to summon Pyros! Pyros! One of the gods that you defeated on Pagan to become the Titan of Ether. How? Oh my God! This game. Oh. I mean, I know. Ugh, that they were on a time crunch, but still, still. 
They couldn't think of anything else. Anything. Oh my god. Even the final fight, you know, was... The final fight kind of summed up this game in a nutshell. Because, one, it's boring. Two, it feels pointless. And three, it has plot holes. So, it's this game in a very big nutshell. I mean, for a boss fight, it really sucks. The Guardian just stands there and lets you do whatever the hell you want. I waited for him to do something. And he just didn't do anything. He just stood there, didn't move. He let me pick up the, the pieces of his shattered uh, to, to black gate. I put one down. And then I think he zapped me with a lightning bolt. Which brings in the plot hole of... He can attack you, supposedly, fine, you know. He, he doesn't take any damage from attacking you. How... Who knows, even though you're both supposedly part of the same being, which is completely stupid, especially when you're told that that makes you responsible for the destruction of the world, even though, how are you responsible? Who the hell knows? That's completely stupid. Anyway, he zaps you once, you put down the next piece, and from the, there was a guide that said that you're supposed to see some cutscene doing that. I didn't. I saw nothing. I don't remember exactly what... Oh, you were supposed to see the uh, moons not colliding. Putting down the piece, but I didn't see a thing when I put down the second piece. Then you put down the third piece and you're... Hey, game's... Oh, no, 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 sorry, game's not over. You put down the third piece and then you have to type in the overly long and complicated uh, uh, the ritual for Armageddon. And then you're treated to the end of the game, which... Anti-climax in a nutshell. You destroy the Guardian, you merge with him, and you ascend to space, I guess? I don't know, and somehow a constellation of an Ankh is made because of that. I don't know. And, uh, that's the end of Ultima. Hooray! What a... goddamn... shitty way to end a series. I mean, uh, Oh my god. It's... it's bad. It's really bad. I tried to stick up for it in the first half. After this, there's there's no th there is no no saving this. Not in its current state. You can see the potential. The potential is there. If they had more time, but they had time, and they chose to not use it. Just to think, like a year after this, Baldur's Gate 2 came out, with no 3D graphics. One of my favorite RPGs of all time, yet this, with its buggy engine, plot hole filled story, overall boring premise of collecting a glyph, collecting a sigil, recollecting mantras, even though the avatar at this point in his career should already know every single one of them, through nine plus games. You have to do that eight times. It's just and repetitive. I criticize. Oh, I didn't criticize him. I said, but I brought up Spoonie a couple times. Probably 
His most memorable quote, well, I guess I can paraphrase because I don't remember it exactly, was that this game is boring. And it really is. Especially after you lose interest with the whole Dupre thing and the crashes, intrinsic. It just sucks you out and becomes boring and repetitive. It's sad. Really sad. Like I said, you can see the potential. I don't know if that's I don't know if the potential is there only because of Richard Garriott coming back on. But it's there. I know why they threw in a lot of the little the little uh throwbacks to uh, old Ultimas, but doing that brings up tiny little plot holes. Like mundane skull in the museum. Who knows? I don't know. Just feeling really let down. I mean, I was told it was bad. The first half of the game, I was like, oh, this isn't too terrible. But then when she, once you play the game through to the end, you understand why. You understand why. I respect that a game exists because just do it. Read the development history of Ultima 9 and and you'll be in shock because supposedly it was ready for its own alpha or was it a beta? I don't remember. But Ultima Online entered it first and was hugely successful and EA shoved the entire development staff from Ultima 9 to Ultima Online and from that that was it because they came back and for whatever reason decided that the game engine was outdated and they needed to use 3D graphics why who knows only EA knows because like I said a year after this, Baldur's Gate 2 was released with no 3D graphics, and it was amazing. So, who knows? I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. But, hey, whatever. I'm just rambling right now, so... I hope you enjoyed the run. I'm sorry to end on a kind of a bummer note for anybody who was hoping for praise, and hey, this wasn't all that bad. No, it's bad. It's really bad. The story's bad. The gameplay is repetitive. Its main sin is that it makes you hate it. It crashes and plot holes and boring, tedious sailing. The combat is boring and repetitive. Anyway, yeah, I. I hope you enjoyed the run for what it's worth. If not, I advise you to go watch DJ Grossman's run. He goes into a lot more detail in towns and stuff. It's amazing how much I missed watching his run. It's, it's a, it amazes me. Like, I didn't even find the scroll to the solution of the puzzle in Hithloth. When I saw that, I was like, what? I did that dungeon twice, and I didn't find that stupid scroll, yet somehow I aced that in the recorded run, somehow. Who knows? Anyway, I'm out. This is Mink. I'll see you whenever next time will be with... Who knows? It'll be a surprise to both of us. Anyway, goodbye.